So while I was on yet another hunt for some interesting indie horror games to try out, I decided to turn to my fanbase to see if I could find something interesting that one of you guys had suggested to me. There were quite a few games which piqued my interest, some of which I actually fully intend to make videos on in the future, but one stood out to me the most while I was on my little hunt. The game was suggested to me through Instagram DMs of all places, and the person in question had asked me to try out a free indie horror game called Zardy's Maze. Now, I'd never heard of this game before, and hearing that it was free, I figured, why not? I've got nothing to lose. So I looked into it, and what I ended up finding was an extremely interesting game that I ended up sinking hours into. Zardy's Maze is a very challenging, yet enjoyable horror game which uses a procedurally generated maze and a whole catalog of interesting monsters to keep the player on edge. What seems at first like a very short and simple experience suddenly turns into a game worth hours of your time thanks to the sheer amount of content it boasts. What originally made me check this game out was the interesting premise and the free-to-play aspect of it. However, after finishing it, I honestly feel like I would have paid for this game if a price tag was put on it. And for that reason, I'd love to talk about it today. In this video, I intend to go over Zardy's Maze, discussing how enjoyable it is to try and finish this surprisingly difficult game. So, without further ado, let's delve into it. So first things first, let's discuss what Zardy's Maze even is. Zardy's Maze is an indie horror game developed by the YouTuber SwankyBox, which was released on Steam on September 30th, 2020. The main idea behind this game is that the player must enter a massive, procedurally generated corn maze to find and destroy three massive, towering weeds. This may seem like an easy task at first, but the game immediately catches you off guard with the sheer amount of enemies that are trapped in this maze with you. The main game of Zardy's Maze has six unique enemies that spawn randomly in the maze alongside you, each with entirely unique mechanics that you have to learn on your own in order to win. Fending off these enemies as well as destroying the three weeds in the maze will eventually allow an exit to open somewhere in it, and only through reaching it can you properly win. What I found so interesting about Zardy's Maze once I actually started playing the game was how surprisingly challenging yet entertaining it was to try and get through the maze. Because of the procedurally generated seeds the game uses for the maze, we're never able to properly learn about our surroundings, meaning we have to completely change our strategy to fit whatever new maze we're faced with. And then of course, there's the colorful cast of enemies that are trapped in this randomly generated maze with us. Each of the enemies in Zardy's maze have very simple mechanics tied to them, that on their own don't really pose much of a challenge to us. However, throw them all together in a massive maze with little to no instruction on how to fend them off, and we have a very different story. And yeah, when I said that the game doesn't tell you how to fend off these enemies, I mean it. At the start of the game, the only instructions we're given are to grab our axe and flashlight and to destroy the weeds in the maze. Other than that, the game literally tells us nothing, leaving us to figure out what to do ourselves. And this was quite possibly my favorite part of playing this game. By throwing the player into a maze with a bunch of enemies they don't know how to fend off, it creates a sort of trial and error approach to gameplay that I found extremely enjoyable. I found that every single time I would die, I did so because I didn't understand how to deal with a specific threat in front of me, which very quickly made me learn and improve on my next attempt. Take, for example, the enemy the game is named after, Zardy. When I first encountered this guy in the maze, my immediate course of action was to try and fight him with my axe, which pretty much instantly led to my death. Dying to him while trying to use the axe taught me that it wasn't the tool I needed to deal with him. So the next time I encountered Zardy, I tried to use my other tool I had at my disposal, the flashlight, which ended up being the thing I needed to fend him off. This trial and error play style that the game promotes makes each death feel meaningful and fair, making it feel like something can be learnt from all your failures to eventually lead to victory. It also makes it really satisfying when you do discover the proper way to deal with a threat in front of you, because it feels like the game genuinely rewards you for not making the same mistake again. And even when you figure out and master all the mechanics behind the many monsters in Zardy's Maze, the game continues to challenge you by having these enemies work with one another to catch you as you try to fend them all off. 
Sure, you may be able to use your flashlight to scare Zardy away, but what if you get into that situation while being chased by one of the pumpkin jacks as well? Mastering the game is not only about learning how to deal with each threat you come across, but it's also about being able to react quickly and effectively when multiple threats are present at a time. Doing this is extremely difficult, but once you get good enough at traversing the maze as well as dealing with every enemy in it, finally reaching that exit at the end feels incredibly satisfying, because it shows that you were properly able to learn from your mistakes and master the challenge of the base game. And this discussion of the game's challenge has gone without even mentioning the amazing challenge mode you gain access to after beating the base game. The challenge mode of Zardy's Maze is exactly the kind of post-game content I wanted to see from this game. It has everything you could possibly want to get a more difficult experience, while also being extremely customizable. It adds multiple new characters to the maze with brand new mechanics, has several preset challenges which ramp up in difficulty slowly, and if those challenges aren't your cup of tea, you can even create your own challenges by changing how many monsters are in the maze, as well as changing their individual AI level. You can even copy and paste seeds for different mazes if you prefer to play with a certain preset level layout. The customization you get from this challenge mode makes the game damn near infinitely replayable, and for that reason I found myself messing around with it a lot just to see what the hardest possible challenge I could beat was, and I still find myself doing this from time to time just for fun. Even without this challenge mode though, the game still keeps a level of replayability all thanks to the procedurally generated nature of its design. Every single time you play the game, the random nature of both the maze, as well as the enemies in it, makes it so that you never know what to expect going into it. So no matter how many times you play it, the game can still provide you with a fair challenge. This fundamental game design, as well as the plethora of options available in the challenge mode, makes Zardy's Maze an extremely entertaining game that I honestly would have paid money for if Swanky Pox put a price tag on it. I feel like this game has so much content and enjoyment to offer for how simple it is, and for that reason it's a gem sitting in Steam's massive gallery of horror games. If you haven't tried this game before, I couldn't recommend it enough. It's not a very demanding game on your computer, and it's completely free on Steam, making it very accessible to anyone who wants to give it a try. And if you don't already, I also highly recommend watching the stuff made on YouTube by this game's creator, Swankybox. Not too long ago, he already revealed that there's going to be another one of these games in the works, and he overall makes some really great stuff on there. Anyway though, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I had quite a bit of fun finally getting around to checking out smaller indie games again, after I kinda took a break from it with my last couple uploads, and I fully intend to go looking for some more to make videos on soon. Whatever it is I do end up making in the future though, I hope you're there to enjoy it. Goodbye for now.